Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. The day that we favorite, talk about love. Your favorite, most memorable Valentine's well, Day. To, to, truthfully, I remember as a child um, going out of my way to make sure I got my mother Aww. a box of hearts. She usually was always dieting. Uh-huh. Okay, and uh, she really didn't eat them. But she would thank me and, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I remember. I, I remember Valentine's oh, Day that's so sweet. always saving up. I want to make sure that I got my mother oh. some, uh, 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 one of those, you, you know what I'm talking about? Because uh -huh. I, I, I didn't buy much for you because you didn't, you didn't really eat candy like that either. Okay, the, the, you know, the hearts, the heart thing. <laughs> Yeah. I would have liked one. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, well, you, you have been well taken care of on Valentine's Day. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> but that was so sweet of yeah. you. Yeah. You know, that you saved your money up and you wanted to make sure you got your mother something for Valentine's yeah. Day. I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Never knew and that. Then, um, um, and, then in, and then, I don't know, what you, did you all do anything special in school? In school, oh yes, the little, school, the little um, boxes, the, the boxes with the different the things Valentine's on it. And Day card. We used to count how many we would get, you know, and you wanted to make sure you, you got some from the opposite sex. Well, I don't know how y'all did that since you went to all girls school. High school. What was going on? All girl high school, elementary school. Oh, yeah. It was it was co-ed. You were co-ed well, up at your eighth grade. Not, I didn't know that. <laughs> Wow, we both figuring out, finding out so stuff, huh? So I always thought, I no. know your, your school was, mm -hmm. um, all girls was an all-girls school. In high school. That was, that was high school. High school. But elementary school, you had yes. a boyfriend? I had a few boys that liked huh? it. Liked I it, thought liked I was your first. I had a few boys that liked it, me. They liked it, me, real good. I thought God saved you and spared you for me. That's why, that's, that's why you went to all-girls school. I went to all-girls school. <laughs> so no boys would get to you before I well, met you. you know, at that time, we were, you know, of course, that was frowned upon. We could not date anyone. Of right. course, I couldn't date at home. But at school, no, we the just Lord's was, to, the Lord's wasn't playing that. Was, my mom was not playing that. The Lord's was not that. playing that. Mm -mm, not at all. But we used to look at each other and smile at each other, kind of flirt, blink your eyes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. How would you blink those eyes? Show me how you blink those eyes. Oh, sookie, sookie. <laughs> all right, okay, we, we, we got to get on. All right, we got to get on with the okay. word. So, on Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. we talk about love. We talk about love. And we want to present today a discussion, a lesson about love. We're entitling this Three Dimensions of Love. Three Dimensions of Love. You know, Paul says, I pray that you would understand the height, the depth. Yeah. Uh, the width yes. of the love of God. Right, right. Paul talks about love on three dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, when we think about love as the word is in the scriptures, particularly in the Greek from the New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, there was three types of love. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, phileo love, mm -hmm. okay, which is brotherly love. Mm -hmm. When you think about that, think about Philadelphia. Phil phileo, phila. Uh, Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. And then you had Eros love. Eros love is the romantic it's love. what you have for me. It's what we have for each other. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. Eros love, romantic love, mm -hmm. uh, attraction love, mm -hmm. okay, emotional love. But then the highest form of love is agape love. Right. Or, or as I've heard some people, it sounds a little more spiritual, call it agape. <laughs> agape love. Agape or agape love is the highest form of love. And so I believe uh, God, one scripture tells us that God is love. Mm. So love starts with God. Right. God is the author of love. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. The Bible doesn't say he's the author and finisher of love. Know why? Come on, help, help me out. Why, why wouldn't he be the author and finisher of love, he, Pastor Marshall? I don't know. He's all in Because love never ends. Exactly. I can't go there. You didn't give me a chance. Love never ends. It's, it's the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, uh, what, the 12th chapter, everything else mm. is going to end. Love Knowledge ends. is going to end, yeah. wisdom, but, but love never ceases. Mm. So God is, God is love. Mm -hmm. Love is God. Mm -hmm. God is perpetual. Mm -hmm. So love is perpetual, which really tells me you know, this whole thing about people, you know, uh, having, I don't mean no harm, this is not about 
trying to put shade on anybody. Where you going? But, you know, uh, you have three husbands, four husbands, uh, three wives, four, and you used to love them, but you don't love them no more. And you fall in love, out of love with them, and then you fall in love with somebody else falling out. You know, I don't really know about that because I really believe if, if God has anything to do with it. Now, you, sometimes relationships don't work out right. and, your, and situations change, but I believe if you ever love anybody, you always love them if it's really love. Because lo real love is rooted in God, all right? Let, let's look at, look at Matthew 22 here. Matthew 22, 25 through 39. It says, then one of them, which was a lawyer, now lawyer here doesn't mean one who tries cases, okay, but a lawyer here means an expert in the Jewish law. He said, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him or testing him saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Talking about the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mm -hmm. with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Again, three elements of love, heart, soul, and mind. Mm -hmm. And then he says, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Jesus said the greatest of all the commandments. In another place, we see several places in Scripture that says that all the commandments, okay, particularly if you want to go back to the Ten Commandments, okay, you have, you have um, the, the commandments that deal with God, mm -hmm. and then the rest of them deal with uh, our relationship with, with one another. Don't steal, don't kill. Don't bear false witness. All those things is about how we treat other people. And the first one is that you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And so the, when we talk about love on three dimensions, the love in three dimensions is mentioned there in Matthew 22, 37, and then verse 39. First, we love God. And then you got to look a little deeper here. Verse 39, and the second, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 39 really talks about two loves. Mm -hmm. It talks about loving your neighbor, right. but then it's, it's kind of thrown in there, loving yourself. Yeah. So the three dimensions of love are loving God, loving your neighbor, mm -hmm. and loving yourself. Loving your God, I believe, has to, uh, we can call that the height. That's our vertical love, mm -hmm. our love towards God. Okay, loving thy neighbor, that's horizontal love. Mm -hmm. Okay, but loving yourself is going a little deeper. Yeah. It's, look, it's going internally right. with, within yourself. And so we, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. Talk, and uh, first of all, I think it's so important for us to realize that loving God, first of all, is a response to him loving us. Mm. Okay, uh, you, you just don't wake up one day and say, I just decide I'm going to love God. You know, you don't love God? What's wrong with you? Okay? I'm just going to, I'm just going to love the Lord. I just, I just decided I'm going to give him my life. And no, uh, and we, we even talk about things like, you know, uh, I found the Lord right. and that kind of stuff. And we know what mean, people mean I came to, right. to discover a relationship with the Lord. But the truth of the matter is God wasn't lost. Mm -hmm. Jesus wasn't lost. Mm -hmm. We were lost. We were lost in trespasses and sins, right. the scripture says. But God really was seeking us out yes, he was. Because, he, because he loves us. So loving God is a response to him loving us. And, and that's right there in 1 John 4 and 19. 1 John 4 and 19 says, we love him. Why? Because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. You remember, remember one of the first songs we learned in Sunday school. Um, oh, how I love Jesus. You can go to Sunday school. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. You know the rest? Come on, Pastor Marshall. You've been around the church long enough. Why do we love Jesus? Because he first loved Jesus. Yeah. There you go. Because he first loved me. And that scripture is based upon the mm. 1 John 4, 19. We love him not because you were smart enough to love right. him, right. not because you had such a big heart. 
We love him in direct response to him loving, loving us. us. Amen. And watch this. And if you have not given your life to Jesus, mm. if you have not made him the center of your life, you simply have not requited the love. You know, uh, I remember this from junior, well, freshman year in high school. We studied Romeo and Juliet and Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet, and we read it and dissected and, and flipped it over and turned it on, dissected and cut it apart. But one of the themes of the book of, uh, one, one of the themes of Shakespeare's uh, poem, rather, or play, Romeo and Juliet, is the concept of unrequited love. Unrequited love. Unrequited love means I love you, but you don't love me. Right. Unrequited love means it's not reciprocated. It's not returned. And until you are in a relationship with God and they receive Jesus, there's unrequited love. God does not love you when you start loving him. Right. You love him because he first loved you. Amen. He loves us first. He loves us first. So we love him because he first loved us. I mean, that, I mean that's, that's something that really, if I get caught up in that, to really realize the love of God. Paul, that's why Paul says, that's in Ephesians, right? Mm -hmm. He prays, I want, I want you to really understand. Yeah. Try to comprehend. Yeah. He, say, he says, I want you to understand it, but it's really incomprehensible. It's yeah. it, I, I want you to understand, but I know you really can. Right. It's deeper than you can really understand. But I at least want you to try to put your mind and grab this concept of God loving us. You know, and scripture said, tells us things like this. It said, greater love right. has no man than he would lay down his life mm -hmm. for his friends. Right. Okay? Right. He said, it's nice if a friend loves you enough to sacrifice his life or put himself in, arm, in harm's way for you. But then it goes and says, it said, but God's love is deeper than that. Yeah. It said, because God commended his love towards us, wow. That while we were yet sinners, he sent Jesus to die for us. He, he had faith that we would respond to his love. And we are saved today because when you get saved, all you're doing is responding to the love of God. You're saying, I thank you for loving me that much. You know, it's, you're saying, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like sometimes, you know, when, when a relationship starts out, Okay, now I know it's a new day now, but I came along at a day and we've taught in the church. They, they, they even would teach us that the Bible said, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So the man should be searching. The man should be hunting. The woman just needs to be available to be found. Okay. But now women search out men today. They do. Men, women are trying to find a man today. It's, it's hard out here for some in the streets. Women, women are, um, are running after men. But traditionally, the man will go after the woman. Mm -hmm. And he would pursue the woman. Now you got women pursuing men. Women stalking men. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to make him love me. Okay, in the scriptures, the man went after the woman, and, and then, the, then the man would pay dowry to her family right. to show he even got something that's worth her. Did you pay a dowry huh? for me? I, I'm still paying it. <laughs> I don't think you paid Lord it. Lord Jesus, I, God had to prosper me because uh -huh, you're so expensive. Uh -huh. Praise God. Amen. Because your price is far above Far rubies. above, my brother. Far above far rubies. Above. Yeah, but usually a man would pursue the woman, and, and so... If a man pursued her right, he always felt like even if she doesn't love me now, I'm going to make her love me. Mm. Remember that song? Mm. I'm going to make you love me. Not you know really. that song? Not really. Don't All try right. to act like you that young woman. I'm sorry. Yes, I will. How? Yes, I will. When did that song I'm going to make you love me. When did that song come out? I, I don't I, I think it may have been the Supremes even, right? Okay, well, that's, that's oh, a Oh, come on. Oh, don't even try. It ain't like you're a millennial, Pastor Marshall. I'm not a millennial, but those years are like How many years, years is it? How it's, many years is between us? It's like 10 years. <laughs> y'all, Now, y'all know she's not supposed to lie on Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, but it feels How like many 10 years. How many years is it? It feels like 10 it's years. It's three years. I know, but it feels like when it comes and to it, music and... 
different things. Anyway, like 10 years. the song used to say, I'm going to make you look. Mm-hmm. A man would try. And so he would try by buying her thing. He would try by, quote, unquote, whining her and dining her and mm-hmm. taking her out and buying her flowers and spending money. And then the, the goal was, if I do all this, I'm going to win her affection. I'm going to win her heart. I'm going to make her love me. God went through all that for us by yes, sending he did. Jesus. He did. he did. Okay. And he still, for many of you, again, I don't know how this is becoming evangelistic like this. It really is. But, but for many of you, if you have on this Valentine's Day, if you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, he, he's saying, I, I'm, I did all that. I'm still trying to win your love. I want you to love me back. I love you unconditionally. And God does not, he's not getting to know us. Mm-hmm. He's not trying to, to see if, how much of us he's going to put out there like that. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, I, you know, I I'm, you know, I'm careful. I, I'm, I've been hurt before. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put myself out there like that. When he put Jesus out on the cross, mm-hmm. okay, he put himself out like yes. that. He loves us so much that he wanted us to be reconciled to him. And Jesus came to do just that. So often when we think about receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, think about what you can't do, what you have to give up, what you have to li- how you have to live. It's about receiving him receiving. as your Lord and Savior. And receiving the love. And receiving the love so you can be reconciled. God wants his family back. Yeah. And so he sent Jesus on a mission to recover his family by shedding his blood for us. And he just wants you to receive. That's good. I, and, might, I might preach that. The recovery mission. Oh, that is. You can preach it now. Yeah, you the, can preach the, it. The recovery you can pre- mission. Yeah. Okay. So that's what, that's what receiving Jesus Christ is all about. Amen. So when we respond to the love of God, because mm-hmm. he initiates this, he pursued us by sending Jesus. Now, when we say yes to him, he loved us so much, he gave his yes. only begotten son, yes. that whosoever believed in him should not perish by everlasting life. And then, as you said, now we're in the family of God. When you respond to love of God and say yes to Jesus, now you're in the family of God. First John 3 and 1. It says, Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, say, what kind of love is this? That Somebody as sinful as me, somebody as depraved as me, somebody as wretched as me, somebody as backward as me, somebody as rebellious as as me, as we are or were, that God allows us to be in his family and calls him, calls us his sons. And sons means now he gives us all the rights and privileges. Now watch this, watch this, it's it's gonna, it's gonna, uh, make some people think. God, we are as much, when we get saved, we are as much a son of God as Jesus is. That's, that's a thought. That's powerful. It's we, powerful. And we have the same rights that Jesus has. Yes. Oh, yes, to God. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, the closest Paul could say it, he said, is the spirit of adoption. Mm-hmm. But then he has to make it a little deeper. He says, we've been engrafted in. Okay, so watch this. When you've been grafted in, okay, I I, I taught on this a few years ago. You know, they got plants that once you, uh, that that plant, you you get a, you can break off a piece of it. But now when you plant it, it comes in grafted with the others and nobody you would ever know that this one was brought in from someplace else. God engrafts us into his family and watch it and make us look like him. And you don't look like a stepchild. Right. And he doesn't treat us like stepchildren. And so the scripture says, uh, Behold, what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. I didn't write the scripture down. But then he goes on to say, he says, uh, Beloved, now are we the sons of God because he loved us. Man, that's so good right there. Yeah. Man, I'm a son. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. I, 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 I did, he gave the spirit of adoption. We can say, I'm a father because he loves us. Now I'm a son of God. Yeah. I got all the rights and privileges right. that of Jesus. Right. I'm rich. I'm right. healed. Right. Uh, I got the right to, to everything that God gave Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Not tomorrow, not next year when you get it all together. But once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now, at that moment, You become a son of God. And you have all the rights and privilege 
as anyone that's been saved for 40 years, 20 years, 30 years, you have just as much rights as them. You ought to put a, a high five hand up there in the message box, say, Lord, I thank you, that's me, that I am a son of God. I have all the rights and privilege. Come on now, that is so awesome. Um, you know, and as I was just talking about that, about us being sons of God because he loves us like that and, make, and making us part of his family. When Jesus prayed the real Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. in John 17, among the things that he says in John 17, verse 24, he says, Father, I will that thou also, whom thou hast given me, that they be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou loveth me before the foundation of the world. And then he says, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou sent me, and I declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Mm. Jesus said, I'm praying, Father, that they experience the same love. Jesus. Wow. That's so so God doesn't love us less than he loved no, Jesus. No, he does not. We are Join, uh, that's why the Bible says, man, it's so good. Heirs. We're joint heirs. Yeah, we're joint heirs. We're not sub heirs. Joint heirs. We're joint heirs. Now, now you need to understand, that whole concept of being a joint heir, and, it, and particularly when the scripture is writing about that to, to people from the Jewish tradition, come on, we know all, going all the way back to, to uh, Esau and Jacob, that the firstborn was more special. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The firstborn had the blessing. Right. The firstborn had the birthright. Mm -hmm. Luke 15, the, the sons, mm -hmm. he said, Father, give me, the, the younger said, give me the, that what falls to me. He knew that what falls to him wasn't the same mm -hmm. as what goes to the older son. Right. Because the older got more. Right. Y'all listening to me here. Oh, but because God loves us so much, when we get saved, we now become joint, joint heirs. heirs. Yeah. We, we get the same portion that Jesus gets. So good. This is awesome, y'all. He loves us like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I want you to comprehend. He wants us to receive that love and understand that you're not subpar or, or you less worthy of his love. And sometimes, depending on what you experienced in life, it could be a hard concept for you to wrap your brain around that God loves you just as much as he loved his son, Jesus, so much so that he made us joint heirs, my good, of his love. And, and we all can understand how much he loved Jesus. And, and we, we know that there was nothing he would hold back from Jesus or nothing he wouldn't do for his son. We understand that, but can we understand the same thing regarding us, that there is nothing God will hold back from you. There's nothing that can stop God from loving you. Amen. That God wants you to understand understand this and receive his love so you don't walk out your life with him feeling less worthy, having guilt, having shame or condemnation. You would never think of Jesus having any condemnation. You would never imagine Jesus walking his life, living in shame. You said, no, that's God's son. There's no shame he has. Well, that's the same type of love that God has for you, that his love will surround you and deal with anything in your life that you feel is unworthy. His love covers it. Amen. And heals it. That scripture from Romans 8, what I've been talking about here, it says, Romans 8, starting verse 15 through 17, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, mm -hmm. but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I got a daddy. Mm -hmm. We were illegitimate. We were, but now God is our father mm -hmm. as much as he is Jesus' father. Wow. Okay, I'm a, now, a watch it. If he's as much as our father, as much as he was Jesus' father. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm going a little deeper. Surely he's much as our father as he was the Jewish people's father. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the they're God's special people. You're God's special people. So are you. So we are, are you. joined. We have received the wow. spirit of adoption. Verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Here we go. Verse 17. And if children, mm -hmm. then heirs. 
He, then he says, heirs of God. And then but Paul says, I, I'm saying the heirs, but it's a little deeper than that. No, you're heirs of God. No, it's a little deeper than that. I mean, I want you to really understand. And joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Amen. We, he doesn't get a, Jesus didn't get a bigger portion. We right. are joint heirs with Christ. Everything he yeah. has, we, we have, and we have a right to. Wow. Yeah. We have to receive it by faith. Amen. And if so, be that we suffer with him, mm -hmm. we may also be glorified together with him. Wow, this has taken on such a different turn, a little bit of a turn here, because I believe there's somebody right now just wrestling with the concept that God loves you. Wrestling with the concept that God sent his son for you. And before you can even go any further to receive this word, he wants you to receive his love for you you right where you are he wants you to understand and open up your heart for his love to heal to help to strengthen you so you can have the capacity to begin to try to comprehend the love of God amen amen so so we you we want you to receive the love of God God the first dimension we're talking about uh, that we love God, but we can't love God until you respond to his love. Amen. Loving God is responding to his love. Yeah. Loving God, first of all, is saying, thank you for loving me. Mm. Okay? So loving God is response to his love. We love him because he first loved us. God loves us. He, he gives us spirit of adoption. He calls us sons of God. Now let's go a little bit deeper here. So what does loving God, if we respond to the love of God, what does loving God look like? Okay, what's a loving God look like? First of all, I think that loving, loving God looks like putting him before personal pleasure. And when I was preparing this, I came across the scripture. I said, I never saw that like that. And that's based upon 2 Timothy 3 in verse 4. Bob said, knowing, knowing the last days, perilous times shall come. Uh, men will be lovers of themselves, unholy, unthankful. Uh, without natural affection. And then he says in 2 Timothy 3 and 4, there'll be traitors. That's because people aren't loyal. Right. Okay. They'll be heady, conceited. They'll be high-minded. Then it says lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Mm. Let's stop there for a moment. Wow. Do you love pleasure more than you love of God? Okay. Are there things that you would easily do to satisfy yourself, please yourself, but you think if God asks that of you is too much. So loving God means that I, you know, the Bible, that I get to the point that I love God more than I love pleasure. Now, the root word of pleasure is what? Is please. So pleasure is something that pleases you. And so when we love God, we put him and what he desires of us even over what pleases us. So to love God, I have to have a consciousness of what pleases him, okay? That's good, yeah. I have to have, a, without, so for example, Scripture tells us what? Um, it does, he, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, from, so it displeases God for me not to believe him. God's, if God could, God's greatest pain is to be disbelieved. And God's greatest pleasure is to be believed. So when we exercise faith in Jesus, exercise faith in God, that's, that's demonstrating our love towards God. We put pleasing him over pleasing, over pleasing ourselves. And the Bible tells us, I believe that's Philippians, uh, Philippians second chapter, it says that, that let uh, let us not just do things to please us for vain glory or to please ourselves. And I think as Christians today, uh, and it probably requires more of it in the midst of a pandemic where we're not having our regular in-person assembly services, that we're conscious, what are we doing with our time? What, what, what are we doing with our time? Are you living your life to please God or you're living like your life to please yourself. You know, you know, honey, we, you know, I came, we came along at a time that, that, uh, you know, we were, we, people were real clear about what was sin, what we weren't supposed to do, where you weren't supposed to go and all that. And people, some people did that in works. 
Some people did that. Well, the church said I'm not supposed to do this, or my church don't allow me to do this, whether going to the movies, wearing this, sleeping here, going there. But uh, I believe that there is something to you making some choices voluntarily for yourself that says, I know this doesn't please God. I know me going to this club don't please God. I know me going to the strip club don't please God. I know me drinking this doesn't please God. And it may please yourself. But when we love God, we live beyond ourselves and pleasing ourselves, and we want to please him. Loving to love God is to please him. You know, I can say, if I say to you, baby, Marsh, you know I love you, but I don't care what you think. If we love God, we care what he thinks about us. You know, the Bible talks about Moses. The Bible says about Moses that Moses chose to suffer the afflictions with the righteous than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Sin is pleasurable. Doing things that your flesh likes is pleasing to your flesh. But what can be, what can be pleasing to our flesh can be displeasing to God again. What can be displeasing to our flesh can be displeasing to God. And so when we say we love God, now we say, I want to live my life to please the Father. I, I, there's, there's a place where, where Jesus talks about the reciprocity of him uh, pleasing, pleasing the Father. And he says, my Father loves me. He says, because I do those things that please him. Let me, let me, let me find that scripture. Yeah. Uh, let me hear. Matthew, 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 Matthew. Matthew, is it Matthew? Uh, well, let, 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 me, let me give you, yeah, here we go. It's John. John 8, 29. John 8, 29 says, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. Come on, if we love God, you ought to want to please him and not merely please ourselves, which is, which is the next scripture that, that comes up there uh, regarding pleasing ourselves. Romans 15 and 3 says, For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. So when we love God, we have to get to the place, it's not really about me right, and right, what I want, right. what satisfies my flesh. Right. And so to love God means love, love the Lord your God, because that's, that's the first dimension. I love God. I respond to his love with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, all my strength. I please him. I want to please him. Mm. When people love each other, they want to please each right. other. Right. Now, when people get offended with each other, and they plan on walking out to marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, I don't care. Right. I don't care what you think. I go where I want to go. I do what I want to do. I, I, I know you don't like me talking to them. I'll talk to them. I know you don't like me staying out that late. I'll stay. Well, because something's happening there in your love commitment. Mm -hmm. But when we love God, we want to please God. So, so what, what does loving God look like? How do we know you love God? You want to please him. Also, I believe loving God looks like honoring his word. Now, the word honor, you know, a lot of people think, I, I remember years ago, I, I talk about, um, I went to some place to preach, and it's, it's common. You know, now some preachers charge to preach in particular amounts. I've never done that. I've been in ministry now for for. For 40, 43, something like that. 40 plus years I've been in ministry, preached a lot of places, all, all types of crowds. I never charged anybody an amount to preach. But, um, and so I remember going someplace and uh, they didn't give me an honorarium. Mm -hmm. Now, honorarium, in some circles, you call a speaker's offering. You know, give you, a, and some people they will just give you one, and sometimes they receive an offering for you. And I went there, we were blessing. I took a nice offering. We, we blessed that church, blessed that pastor, and they didn't get, and and they didn't give me, you know, an offering, an honorarium. So, uh, because the person was someone I knew, was, uh, I said to the pastor, I said, uh, I said, you didn't give me an honorarium. She said, Oh, I'm sorry, I I forgot to. I didn't say, when I, I thought when I introduced you, I said, give an honor to you. I didn't, I didn't give honor to you, I'm sorry. No, giving a, a honor, this honor is not merely with your mouth. 
As a matter of fact, there's a place in the scripture where, um, where God said, these people honor, him, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So to honor God is beyond what we say. Well, you know, I believe God, God's a really important part of my life. I really love the Lord. You can say that, but one, one of the ways that you show you honor the Lord, it means to make heavy, to make weighty. weighty. So if I honor God, he is heavy in my life. If I honor his word, his word is heavy in my life. There are people who, 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 who honor me and honor us as their pastor or their spiritual leader or whatever, who will say, well, well you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my pastor's opinion about that. Mm-hmm. And they will govern themselves or take our counsel right. as their pastor, right. maybe even over their friend. Right. What they're saying is our word weighty. is weighty. Mm-hmm. They honor our word mm-hmm. more than their friend or, or more than, you know, whomever. When we honor God, you honor his word. So imagine saying, I love God, but I don't care what God say. I don't care what, no, to honor God means to honor his word, which also means to live by his word. Uh-huh. Look at 1 John, 1 John 2 and verse 5, then we're going to go down to verse 10. It says, whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him, that we have, we have real relationship with him, verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, Mm -hmm. and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth or where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. It says, if we keep his word, that's the evidence that God, we love God, and his love is being perfected in us. So to love God, respond to his love, Uh I want to live by his word. Amen. Amen. I want to live the way he wants me to live. I want to act the way he wants me to act. I want to respond the way he wants me to respond. And so all of us as Christians, remember, I start off saying God's not growing in his love towards us. But many of us, we need to grow in our love towards him. Okay? Because for some, it's some people, you know, just like they say, out of sight, out of mind. Okay? Are we out of church? God ain't on our minds. I, uh, some of us are doing things that we would not do if you were coming up here in church every week. Wow. That's a problem. Because really should not, I mean, this should enhance our lives. But come on now. Are we, are we hypocrites? Do we live in one way in the church and another way if we're not? Come on, if you love God, you love God whether you're in the church, whether you're on your right, job. Right, right, right. I mean, our love for God ought to be a daily thing that we demonstrate by letting his word be weighty in our lives. Okay? Let's go on. Thomas responds to the love of God. God loves us and we love him. We say we love him. That we want to have that that vertical Mm -hmm. relationship to love God. Also, what does loving God look like? Loving God looks like serving people. Loving God looks like serving people. The scripture I read earlier, it says, and not serving ourselves. Mm. Now, it's one thing to love yourself, and there's Mm -hmm. there's some people that will do anything for themselves. You know, I, you know we, we see people all the time, it's, I, they love themselves. <laughs> and you're all, I mean, y'all, y'all love yourself so much, y'all, y'all put pictures on Instagram of you staring in the mirror at yourself. Y'all put pi- all these pictures, you take pictures of yourself. With, and just show, we love ourselves. And, and we print and we, and we show, we love ourselves. And, and uh, we're going to get to loving ourselves. There needs to be a balance with loving ourselves. But... Do you love other people? Wow. Because loving God looks like serving people. If I say I love God, then I have to be concerned about other people. Mm-hmm. See, my, my, my problem, my problem in, in, in recently in some of the political things is that people would want to make people out to be a Christian who, who demonstrate no love for people. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe demonstrate love for policies. Right. Yeah. Okay. But demonstrating no, no love, love for, for people. people. You know, to say things like people die. Every day. Every day. Mm-hmm. People die every day. Wow. And they, how, how can you say that in the same breath 
or say, that you say I love people. No, something inconsistent. Right. If you love people, you're concerned about people dying. Yeah. The Bible says that God loves us so much he even loves the sinner. He reigns on the just and the unjust. Yeah. And the Bible says that he wishes that none perish right. but all come into repentance. Mm. And the reason why, I mean, if God was, if, oh, this is so good. If God only loved Christians, Jesus would have come back already. He sure would have. Yeah. Because he said it, yeah. he would have come back and we would all be raptured up mm -hmm. because we got, there's a lot of Christians in the earth. Mm -hmm. He just would have taken them. But he loves sinners. Right. So he's wait, giving sinners an opportunity to respond to his love. Mm -hmm. He wishes that none, none would perish. So loving God is also means loving people and serve, or serving, serving people. people. John, the 21st chapter, verse 15 through 17. You want to read that, Pastor Marcia? So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto himself the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Notice Jesus He's getting on Peter's nerves because he's really making yeah. him thinking deeper. Yeah. I mean, what, what was, what was, I mean, just, what was Peter going to say? Peter, Peter, do you love me? Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, let me think about it. No, the, the immediate response is, I've been with you for three years. Yeah. I don't, you know, you, you healed my mother-in-law. Right. Okay. Right. You, 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 you gave me the biggest catch of fish ever. I, I've watched you. I, I have relations. Sure, I love you. You know, I mean, uh, right away, to, uh, for, us, for anyone to ask, anyone who professes to be a person of faith, do you love God? Our immediate response is, oh, sure, I love God. Right, right. And Jesus is saying, don't, don't give me a flippant answer here. Think deeper, because mm -hmm. that looks like something. It looks like something. If you say you love God, that looks like something. That's not just verbiage. Right. It's not just words. He says, if you love me, Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes. Feed my lamb. If you love me, now third time, Lord, you know I really, really love you. And it, um, it, was, what wasn't this after? I believe this is this is after the resurrection. I believe. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, it is. This is after the resurrection. This is after Peter had come back, been converted. <laughs> this, this is after Peter. The last time somebody asked something, something three times, yeah, that didn't go too good. It didn't go too well. He started showing out. <laughs> Peter started cussing uh -huh, to convince uh -huh. them. And I heard someone say Peter before had denied Jesus three times. And to undo mm -hmm. those words, Jesus thing. now gives him an opportunity mm -hmm. to undo Cancel the denial mm -hmm. by, by solidifying three times mm -hmm. his love for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got sometimes it takes time to undo all those negative things that we said. Okay, we said, well, I said this, I confess, but yes. you, you've been wow. saying that stuff for a yeah. long time. Yeah. You got to take some time and put enough in on this side, on the right side of the equation, to undo all those negative things. And Jesus challenged, he said, Peter, if you really love me, I need you to do something for me. Right. And what I need you to do for me, be concerned about what I'm concerned about. Feed my sheep, my lamb, my, my, the church mm. is what he was really telling him. Isn't that something? The ones who I'm dying right. for. I right. need to feed them. Right. He's not talking about physical food there. Right. So, you know, you know, we've been doing ministry for a while. And so, so often, you know, we have heard people say, I can't stand people. Or I don't, I don't want to be bothered with anyone. Well, there's a love deficit there. Yeah, yeah. You know, because when, when we say we love God, we have to love what he loves. You know, and, and, and that is God loves people because he sent his son to die for all of the world. He didn't want anyone to perish. And so here we are now as believers who've received the love of God. Now we're having to challenge ourselves to step out of ourselves and to love who God loves. Amen. So it goes, it goes across racial, political, 
gender. It goes across all those li lines. We can't say I love God and I hate this person. You know, one, one of the things that the Bible says about Job, one of the reasons why God recommended Job to the devil, I always say, you don't have to recommend me, Lord. He said, have you, have you thought about Job? He mm. says, Job loves me. He, 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 um, and he eschews what was evil. He, mm. he abhors, he, ab he abhorreth evil. One translation says, he hates what I hate and he loves what I love. To love God is to hate what he hates and love what he loves. And God doesn't hate people. Mm. He hates sin. Right. He hates act, certain activity. Right. Right. But God doesn't hate people. Right. So you can't say I love God and hate anybody. That's right. And we're going to see that as we go deeper in this. So love looks like serving people, which means love looks like ministry. Mm. And mm. ministry simply means serving people. Ministry does not mean ha, that you get a mic, ha, that you get the organ behind you, ha, and that you say ha in the middle of every sentence, ha. Mm. Some people say that's ministry. Some people think ministry is traveling around the world. Some people think ministry is getting on a platform. No, ministry is serving people. Hebrews 6 and 10, it says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name. So he says, your love, you show love to his name. How? In that you men have ministered mm. to the saints and you do minister. Oh, now watch this here. I'm going a little deeper here. Love keeps you going. Mm. Love keeps you doing it. So people say, I love God. I love ministry, but I, I, I ain't doing that no more. And I get it. Mm. I have felt that way. I felt like I am done with this person. I'm done with that. And Lord said, you ain't done. I ain't going back. Lord said, no, you're going I back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that's our flesh talking. Right. That's not, that's not because the love of God mm -hmm. is long suffering. Yeah, is. The love of God, uh, 1 Corinthians 13 tells us, beareth all things. Mm -hmm. Puts up with all kinds of stuff. The, the love of God. So it says that we demonstrate the love towards his name by ministering to the saints. By serving in ministry, by being spiritually employed, by that your, your ushering is not so you can wear the uniform. The ushering is a way of serving people. Um, you know, a, a real, real missionaries, they, they will sacrifice their life to go serve people. Ministry is serving people. And that's one of the ways that we demonstrate our love towards God is through ministry. That verse from Hebrews 6 and 10, the New Living Translation says, For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him, watch this, by caring for other believers, as you still do. And, and that, that latter part, you ministered and do minister. So the love of God keeps you going even when you want to give up. The love of God, because I love God, keeps you ministering and blessing people and helping people and, 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 and aiding people uh, and assisting people when you say, those, those, I ain't studying those people no more. They ain't worth it. I ain't going back. The love of God makes you do it. He says, because you minister and you do minister, that you, it, it shows that you love God by ministering to people. Let me, let me end with this last one here. Loving God and we'll, we'll pick up here because uh, we're going to teach all. That's right. We're going to teach all week on love. We can. That's right. We're going to teach all week mm -hmm. on love. We so can. we know we're going to talk about Wednesday. Right. We're going to continue this love with, thing. On the love thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's end with this one. Loving God looks like loving people. Okay. I'm talking about serving people. But I'm talking about loving people. Because I believe it is possible mm -hmm. to go through the motions Without oh, your course. heart being involved. Of course. Yeah. So you can look like you're ministering. Right. But you don't love people. Yeah, right. I told you my former, my, our former pastor, uh, uh, Apostle Milford Carter, challenged me one time when I was his assistant pastor. He said, Herb, he said, God, God really wants to bless you. He's going to use you mightily. He said, but uh, you, love, you love preaching more than you love people. That was before I was pastoring. That's before we founded this church. And I was offended. I, how could you say such a thing to me? And, and, and uh, I mean, I just thought it was mean to even say that to me. But, but it made me look internally. It made me judge myself. Say, do I love? Do I love? 
people? Do I love preaching more than love people? There are a lot of preachers who love crowds more than we love people. There ain't enough people out to, to go out there. It's not enough people for me to go to that church. Come on. And so we love crowds more than we love people, as in, and you're, and you're, you've heard me say this before, one of, one of my most rewarding times in ministry is going into the bush of, of Ghana, West Africa, preaching in this, in this cement block church that could barely seat 50 people. You remember that? Yeah. And then everybody else was standing all around the room and, 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 standing, and standing all outside. But God loves those people. And they, they were so excited that an American preacher was coming into the bush from, from the United States of America to minister, to minister to them. You can't love crowds more than you love people. Because loving God looks like loving people. 1 John 4, 20 and 21. It says, if any man say I love God, and hates his brother, he's a liar. I didn't call you a liar. The, the scriptures don't <laughs> do. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he that loveth God love his brother also. God said, I don't even want to hear it. Don't tell me you love me and you don't love people. Don't tell me you love me and you're not willing to serve people. Don't tell me you love me and you're unwilling to extend beyond what you just want to do for yourself and you're selfish. And so Jesus gets real. He's, he's, he, uh, he tells his disciples, he said, this is how things work in the kingdom of God. He said, this is how things, he's, and he tells this story in Matthew 25. And then he says, starting in verse 35, he says, I was hungry and you gave me, the, gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. That's what love looks like. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when, when do we ever see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and gave you the drink? Or when do we see you as a stranger and we took you in? When were you naked and we clothed you? Or when were you sick or in prison and we came to visit you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, in as much as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto, who's the least of these? People that can't thank you. People that can't pay you. People that nobody else is thinking about. People who may not live in the biggest cities. People who don't look like they got anything to offer. People who can't necessarily reciprocate. People who you're not going to get any points by saying you help them. That's the least of these. And the love of God, I believe in this day more than ever, the love of God needs to well up in us that we're concerned Amen. about the least of these. Amen. Not just the rich and the powerful. Mm -hmm. Not just the mighty. Not just those who can give the biggest offerings to our church. Right. Not those who make us look prestigious when we say, I'm this person's pastor and that person's pastor. I mean, I mean, praise God. I mean, over the years in our church, we got doctors in our church. We got lawyers. We got political officials in our church now. We, have, we got PhDs and college professors and all that. And we think, and, and those people are important to God, but so is the person Amen. who doesn't even have a high school education. Amen. He says, what you do for them he said, you're doing it unto me. He said, then he'll say to those on the left hand, depart, you, you cur depart from me, you, you curse into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angel, which tells us, which the Bible tells us hell was, wasn't prepared for us. It was for the devil and his angels. Verse 42, he said, why? Because I was hungry and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. I was naked, you clothed me not. I was sick, I was in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or strange or naked or sick in prison? And we didn't minister. To now, Jesus, we, if we saw you, we definitely would do that for you. Amen. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to the one of the least of these, he said, you didn't do it to me. The way that we demonstrate love to God, is how we treat the least of these. Amen. Whether it's our government, mm -hmm. whether it's our church, whether it's us as individuals. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and that same scripture is in 1 John 3, 16 and 17. It says that's how we really perceive the love of God because 
when we have, he said, but we have this world's goods and see a brother need and shutteth up our bowels of compassion and God tries to deal with you, help that brother. Uh, pay that person's rent. Uh, give, give them that. That's so good. He said, and, and he said, and you said, I ain't, no, I ain't helping them. They, they can't do nothing for me. They can't pay me back. God said, how dwelleth the love of God right, in you? Right. Come on, on this Valentine's Day, since we're talking about love, let's talk about love. Yeah. And let's yeah. think about how we can, like never before, really demonstrate it's the time. love of God. It's time. You know, it's one thing to have the emotional love mm -hmm. and, the, and the sexual love and the romantic love. And, but can I tell you the truth of the matter is, we, we know this as a result of being married for 35 years. And I still got to fight Pastor Marshall off me sometime. Say amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. I, I still have to fight her off me sometimes. She, she's still attracted to me and all that. But can I tell you, a real marriage got to, be, got to go beyond the physical. Yeah. It has to go beyond the lights being off. Mm -hmm. What it really takes is the love of God. To make any relationship really last, it takes the love of God. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a relationship with your brother or sister in the church whether that's you staying connected to that job, okay? To make relationships, it takes the love of God. And the love of God helps us to be long-suffering mm -hmm. and yeah. tolerant. Yeah, yeah. And what's the word? Forbearing. Forbearing. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Forbearing. Mm -hmm. That word, the New Testament, King James used the word forbearing with one another. Mm -hmm. And I think New Living Translation says putting up with each other's faults. Yeah. Yeah. We all got faults. We all have faults, and, and sometimes those faults don't change, but they should not diminish your demonstration of love towards that individual. And I just think this is what, where we are as a church in this time, this season, when there's so much animosity because we've been all been pushed to sides, that God is looking for his people to demonstrate God his love. Democrats to love Republicans. There you go. And Republicans right, to love right. Democrats. Love. And conservatives to love liberals. Yes. And liberals yes. to love conservatives. Right. And blacks to love white. And Amen. white to love black uh -huh. and whomever else. Right. And straight to love gay. There you go. And gay to love straight. That's right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and when we talk about love, we're talking about, we're talking about love and demonstration. Mm. We're talking about love and demonstration. Not, we're not just saying words. We're not just right. saying... Oh, we're, I love we're, that person. Yeah, we're, and, we're not, and we're not talking about having some, some feelings for them. Right. We're talking about demonstrating that God is a child of God, whether I agree with them or not. That's a child of God. Yeah, and it'll show up when someone's in need. And if they don't look like you, believe like you, think like you, do you walk by them? Or you're like, well, all right, well, I'll pray for them. But you have the capacity to meet that need. There's a love deficiency there. And I think God is just challenging his people. It's like, what are you going to do about it? What can you do about it? If you love God, then we have to love each other. We have to love people and have a willingness to to not to look through the lens of offense or different, you know, but look through the lens of love. Can you love past differences? Yeah, that's so that's good. good. That's good, loving past yeah. differences. You know, because there's times, you know, like you said, we've been married for 35 years, and uh, I know I am, like, so easy to love. Easy to love. I'm so easy to love. So easy. And, and it's very hard to fall out of love with me. Very difficult. And it's, and it's so hard not so to like hard. me. So hard. Yeah. So I, I tried, but I can't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there might have been one time that it was a struggle, but you did not withhold a demonstration of love by providing, protecting, or caring for me because you made a commitment to me as being your husband. So you're just like, well, I ain't going to do that today, or I'm not going to do this today because I'm upset. No, the demonstration of your love is consistency. So maybe that's a word for a couple today. But it's Valentine's Day, but he ain't been loving to me, so I ain't been loving to him. Mm. She hasn't been loving for me. I'm not going to. Some, some things you do just because right. the person is 
right. in the position they're in. Right, that's good, yeah. So There's you, certain things you're entitled to just because you're my wife, right. period. Right, and you know, Valentine's Day is a big holiday for a lot of people. Mm. You know, I know we, you know, we don't think of it like that. Yeah, because one, one of you, because I give you gifts right. all year long right. and all that. And right, then, yeah. yeah, and so there, there might be a gift that you don't get or there might have been hints you dropped and your spouse did not pick up that hint or a boyfriend or a boo or a bae did not pick that up. Doesn't mean you're like, I'm done. So, you know, of course love is demonstrated, but it's not, all, it's not superficial. You know, and so as husbands and wives, you know, let the love of God truly rise up because in our, in our hearts, even though you might not receive what you desire to receive, be the one to demonstrate love. Well, he's not treating me right, or I, you know, or she's not doing it, doing X, Y, Z. She won't. I want her, her to be affectionate towards me. I have been intimate with my wife or my spouse. I want her. I want her. I want him. Be the one. Yeah. Break the cycle. So somebody might be withholding. Oh, we say in every situation, somebody got to be the more mature right, person. Right. Right. So you might be withholding love. Well, open up that hand and give love. It takes a lot of humility. You know, and say, okay, you know what, God, you know, help me to show love. And you may be single and you may feel like that this day is showing up and, you know, for other people, but not showing up for you. We want you to know that God loves you. That's the number one. God loves God you. God loves you. And you being worthy or valued is not defined by a card or a, a box of chocolate or a gift. It was already defined and settled for you over 2,000 years ago when Jesus laid down his life and shed his blood. God said, you were worthy enough for my son to come. If you were the only person on this planet, Jesus would have still died for you. Isn't that something? Yeah. So receive God's love today. Open up your heart to, uh, to give love, to demonstrate love. And you, or you could be in a relationship with a family member that you're hurt by, angry by, and you say, you know what? I'm done with my sister, or I'm done with my brother, or I'm not going to be dealing with my mother, or, you know, I can't even be bothered with my father right now. Allow God's love to rise up in you and be the one to open your heart, open your hand to give it today to someone who you may even feel is not worthy of it. Amen? Amen. You know, Billy Joel had a song, and some when you were talking about it, just made me think about it. And uh, I, I know musicians musician don't know it, so they don't even have to try to play it. Okay. <laughs> but there was a song that said, Don't go changing mm. to try to please me. You never uh -huh. would have come this far. Don't imagine you're too familiar and I don't see you anymore. Is God saying this to somebody? I would not leave you mm. in times of trouble. We never could have come this far. I took the good times. Mm. I'll take the bad times. I'll take you just the way you are. Amen. Yeah, Billy Joe said that, but I believe that's the word of the Lord to somebody today. Amen. God says, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to leave you. I'm a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and I love you just the way you are. You can come to me just the way you are. You don't have to try to change yourself so you can come to me. I accept you as you are, and then I'll give you what's necessary to become who you need to be. But there's so many people say, well, I need, I need to get this together, get that together. No, God loves you unconditionally. He's not trying to get to love you. Not trying to get to know you. He knows all about you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I pray, Father, that, ev that today especially everyone will come to know, to, apprehend, to, cap to cap comprehend, to apprehend, to understand the love of God that passes all understanding. 
Thank you for loving us just like you love Jesus and making us join heirs with Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus right now that as I'm praying, you go into homes. As I'm praying, you go into, into situations. As I'm praying, you go into hospitals. God, wherever someone needs to experience the love of God, yes. right now I declare that the love of God would overwhelm their souls. You are the God of love. You're not trying to get to love us. You love us just the way we are unconditionally. So I pray right now that many would say, I respond to the love of God. And if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, say this prayer with me. This is how you respond to the love of God. Say, Father God, Father God I, thank I thank you for sending Jesus, sending Jesus to demonstrate his love to me love by, dying by dying on the cross and being raised up being raised on the third day. I receive him now, receive him now as, my as my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I trust you, I trust and, you. I love you back. and I love you back in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Come on. We got a let's talk about love. We got a love thing going on here. God loves you. Amen. If even, even if I don't care who left you, who turned their back on you, who said they don't want anything to do with you anymore, God loves you.